Jag heter Yasin Ahmed Wali. Jag kommer från Drammen. Jag jobbar med en firma som säljer kosttillskott till Kina som på nationalteater heter Nutsund ja, Investor. Och så bästa ögonblick det här första gången jag var till såna i NM alltså i utlandet. Det var gøy med många vänner. Vi reser med en grupp med vänner från ja, Drammen område och Vittingfoss. Så ja. Vad vill det betyda för dig att vinna main event? Det betyder väldigt mycket. Det är massa det er många god pokerspelare här på turneringen. Så ja. Det är lite det är lite stort för mig att vinna. Ja. Den turneringen det, det betyder mycket. Jag har två barn som fyller med varje dag på Youtube och Kone. Så det är, det är lite väldigt stora. Väldigt stora ögonblick. Vad ska du göra för att vinna över dessa syv andra? Jag ska spela min bästa imorgon. Jag ska bluffa kanske. <laughs> ja. Ingve Hallasten. Jag är 33 år gammal från Bergen. Jag jobbar som pokerspelare. Och vad är er dina största prestationer inom för pokern från förr? Eh, min största prestation är väl att leva på poker i många år. Så många olika resultat har man. Det er sök på nätet visst man vill se. <laughs> och vad är er din plan för att ta dig förbi syv andra konkurrenter på ett finalbord? Eh, nu börjar jag ganska shortstack. Jag har inte sett de andra men jag tror kanske ligger näst sist så jag tränger och dubbla mig ett par gånger men gör jag det så kommer jag att komma långt. Lite flax i starten och så kommer jag. Och vem ser du på som din störste motståndare på finalbordet? Ehm um Jag får se om med mycket chips i set 1 2 och 3. De kommer nog att bli vanskligast. Jag heter Kajan Mokri, 28 år från Arnal och fulltidsboksspel. Hur har du klarat att komma dig till detta finalbord så långt och vad är er din spillestil? Nej, den har svingt väldigt mycket. Det har varit väldigt aggressivt och försökt lägga press där det lönar sig och så har det mycket svängning med stacken går väldigt mycket upp och ner, men heller så är er jag klart att bygga upp den disciplinen när jag är er lite så det det ordnar sig som vanligt. Vanligtvis. Vanligtvis. Vem anser du att vara er din tuffaste motspelare på finalbordet? Ja, det måste ju vara han är er Bergensfyren där Yngve Sten då. Må det. Ja. Men nu har han lite chips som så som mig så Så de största sakerna är er naturligtvis favoriter nu. Och visst skulle gå seiren ut av ett NM skryterättigheten som medföljer hur viktig är er det för dig? Du, det börjar bli ganska viktigt nu. Eh, nu börjar jag få mycket PS för det är er Norges mästergrene så jag är er kanske på tid att dra i landen, tänker jag. Jag var på ett finalbord för och fick sätta där men vi får försöka vinna nu. Ett er Johnny Pedersen 27 år kommer från Botsjur jobbar som elektriker. Vad vill det betyda för dig att vinna ett norgesmästerskap i poker? Det hade varit eh, väldigt nice. <laughs> det hade betydd mycket. Och och det är er ju ett av vart blivit fryktligt många gode pokerspelare från norr. En NM-titel ger det skryterättigheter hemma som som gör att du egentligen är er kungen i lång tid framöver. Ja, det gör ju egentligen det men är er kungen oavsett. <laughs> Vem anser du som de starkaste motståndarna dina på finalbordet? Eh, Mokri självklart och det det är er flera starka där på bordet. Och har du någon speciell plan för hur du ska klara att trockla dig igenom det fältet? Spela tight. Tight och gott. Jag heter Morten. Jag är er 37 år gammal. Jag är er från Bergen och jobbar som egenomsmäglare. Och hur viktigt ville det varit för dig Morten att vinna en norgesmästertitel i poker? Altså, det ville varit eh, lite sån amazing. Jag har varit på 9:e plats för, bubblat den här finalbordet. Eh, jag har satt troféer lite om på nära håll eh, så det vill bli väldigt mycket. Jag har jobbat mycket med detta och mycket vänner i pokermiljö. Har du en speciell strategi för detta finalbordet på hur du ska komma dig igenom fältet? Nej, alltså min strategi runt det där, det vill bara vara att fortsätta som jag har gjort. Jag känner jag har spelat solid, jag känner jag har gjort lite fel. Eh så hoppas jag självklart att glien och korten är er där i morgon. Vem är er din tuffaste motståndare? 
Eh, min tuffaste motståndare det är er Kajan Mokri. Selv om han har er minst så er det han jag fruktar mest. Ja, jag heter Tor Håkon Kleven. Kommer från Alta. Jag är er 29 år och jobbar som anläggsledare i ett anläggsfirma i lokalbyen och hembyen. Det är er två norrlänningar på det finale bordet. Hur viktig är er det först och främst att bli bäst i norr? Ja, det är er kanske det som är er mest viktig. Norrlandskampen. Vi har inte några sidebets eller något sånt, men uh, han har ju ganska stor stack nu uh, han han var chipleader så det blir tufft att ta han, men uh, det är er absolut det har varit liksom uh, toppen av kransekaka och liksom uh, ta han ja. Vad har det betydd för dig personligt att vinna ett norrmästerskap i poker? Nei, jeg har jo spilt poker i 10-15 år, og her er første cash i main, faktisk, så det blir finalebord, så det har betydd ganske mye, det har det, det tror jeg. Ikke bare pengene da, men liksom, ja. Ja, fordi at det er jo, å, å klare å prestere på den scenen her, det ville vel også vært noe som hadde virkelig befestet posisjonen som beste pokerspilleren i Alta? Ja, absolut. For det om Alta er utsett vanlig sterkt i forhold til folketallet da. Vi har en del norgesmestere og, i forskjellige grener og faktisk main og så det... Men ikke i nyere tid da, så det har vært kult å ta den hjem til Alta, ja. Hvilken strategi har du inn på finalbordet? Nei, eh... Nu sånn som vi tog ser tillbaka på streamen i kväll så har jag en sån middling stack och då är er lite sån i hornjärn i förhåll till med att det var så mycket short stacks på bordet och hade liksom två stora stacks rätt i öra på mig som öppnade alla händer så det var väldigt tight spel sist eller nu på sista ni är folda liksom bara akus ut till en öppning i big blind för det är er helt i boxen liksom kan inte göra något med de short stacks så det blir spännande att se bordträckningen i morgon då det har mycket att se si på strategin Vem anser du som tuffaste motståndare på bordet? Det är er nog han Lee. Han han var väldigt stark. Jag spelade man på TV-bordet i två levels där tidigare idag och han ja, han verkar väldigt habil. Jeg heter da Lars Kjøsen Harald, jeg kommer morgenalt fra Valdrea, bosatt forløpig i Sandefjord, og jeg jobber som en utvikler for et finansfirma. Hvilke tanker har du gjort deg for dette finalebordet, og hvilken strategi har du lagt? <laughs> for finalebordet det? Jeg har ingen idé. Men opp til nå så er strategien vår, gønn på, ingen regrets, basically. Så det er gala poker hele veien. Hva er dine største pokerprestasjoner fra tidligere? <laughs> ingen. <laughs> Jeg tror, jeg tror i dag er den tromfalt å komme finalebordet gjennom med main eventen. Og hvem anser du som den tøffeste motstanderen på bordet? På bordet? Uff. Um, det er vanskelig å si, egentlig. Um, jeg husker ikke hva han heter. Han er orange cancer med caps. Men han kåler meg hele tiden, og jeg elsker å bløffe. Så jeg anser han som en sterk konkurrent, i alle fall. Och den den pokererfarenheten som du har med dig, var du säger att du älskar att bluffa och gönna på, tror du den är er riktig strategi för att vinna ett norgsmästerskap? Alltså alltså du måste ju du måste ju spela. Du kan inte sitta och vara rädd uh, på finalbordet, sant? Så förhoppningsvis så får jag god bluffa på TV och det går igen om förhoppningsvis och så får jag se vad som sker imorgon. Kanske första plats, kanske åtta plats. Vad är er viktigast norgsmästerskapstitel eller har du de penaste blöffarna på TV-bordet? Åh, oh, det finns de blöffarna. <laughs> Men hvis jeg kan få det både i Bors og Saks, det er ikke gjerne det. Kasper Wurz bor i Florø, 49 år gammel, eh, har en lille malerfirma i byen. Hva, er, hva vil det betydde for dig å vinne en Norgesmesterskapstitel i Boker? Det er nok det største, overhovedet for mig. Jo, pengene er der, men nej, titlen er større. Prøv at tænke på, hvis en dansker kan blive norsk mester. Og hvor norsk føler du dig nu? Føler du dig som en ordentlig floreværing et hvert? Ja, yeah. det. Er... Jeg er norsk. Når du går ind på finalbordet, hvilken strategi har du lagt for at trokle dig gennem dette felt? Med den stack jeg har, så tror jeg, det må være lidt aggressiv og prøve at få en dobling forholdsvis fort, og så kan alt ske. Og hvem anser du å være den tøffeste motstanderen på bordet? Det er veldig svært at sige for alle sammen de er tøffe modstandere. Jeg vil nok, nok, jeg vil nok mene Morten Lige er, er den sværeste spiller at spille mod PT nu. 
på grund af de andre stak, øh, Mogri, der har en vældig lille stak, mindre end mig, så han må køre, og han kan ikke vente på superkort, han må køre med lidt middelskort, og så må vi se, hvad, hvad der sker. Det var en väldigt bra 
this could be a spot to free bet or call. And cool. he's going cool. to call, play the hand in position from the button. I'm pretty Arnold. Reevaluate depending on what else happens. Oh, right. Oh. And let's see what okay. Boris Harid does. He opts to fold. Wally flopping the top pair on this 10 8 4 flop, yep. also a backdoor to the flush. Pedersen does not opt to continue on this flop, does not connect with it, and is going to pretend that he does. Perhaps we'll save up some chips, but Wally slow playing his top pair and perhaps wishing he didn't with another club coming out on the turn. Yep. Now we see Pedersen has no clubs. But it became a scarier board. Wally happy to do pot control at this point. And at two of hearts on the river, Wally with the check mark. Because of the pot control, he wouldn't be going anywhere if Pedersen did fire out of bed, assuming it wasn't like double the pot or something. It does go check check. Wally happy to take down that pot with the pot right. there. <laughs> she couldn't find your neck. Only called or pushed off the pot this would be better. If she was pushed off the pot, it would be better. But it's even without the tech in it. So, Bobby, collecting some chips <laughs> shoot. over 10 I wish you were. We say it's more good. I'll see you again. I'll see you again. Throughout this five day affair, <laughs> and you see that <laughs> has <laughs> not changed despite the seriousness <laughs> of this final table. For some of the players, they're. Oh, <laughs> 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 not deterred after losing a small amount of his chips last hand Ooh. to give Morton Lee the chip lead at least temporarily. They're neck and neck so it doesn't really matter too much who has more chips but this time it's oh, been a good position with the suited ace. Not as good as ace 10 we just saw Wally call but with ace 8 suited. And will Mokri defend off his short stack? Okay, opts not to. <laughs> Similar to what we saw by Lars All Harid the playing the last hand in the big one with his jack eight. And a fairly dry queen queen three rainbow flop. Let's see if Pedersen continues this time. No, he will not. We yeah. also happy to check it. <coughs> not seeing any aggressive post flop play yeah. this time around. Did see Thor Clevin play aggressively with the sixes yeah, earlier on, but that was pre flop. But this time, Morton Lee, after it checks over to him, wants to just take it down on the turn, not get Pedersen that free river card, thinking that his ace is good, or at least trying to see where he's at. And now, Morton Lee up to 26 million. That is the biggest stack so far we've seen in this tournament. Still a big stack of <laughs> yeah, this is fine, And with one hour blind levels, the big stacks do not need really to play. <laughs> Super fancy, some of the short stacks will start to feel the pressure. I am pretty sure Casper Wirtz is happy for that <laughs> early level. <laughs> yeah, this is he was afraid <laughs> about how short a stack was <laughs> <laughs> earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see what he does from the low jack here. Right, 700,000. Putting up to 700,000 with his king jack suited. Oh. of what he's playing. But meanwhile, Ingve 
Chris Stenn, two-time Norwegian champion winner. With the King-10 from the big line, we could see is dominated, but even off a short stack, this is defendable if he so chooses. He may even three-bet shove here. And if we called, he'd be dominated. But we may not call if he did shove. But we do not know what Sten is thinking about here. But all three possibilities are definitely in play. But Sten gives up on the hand, Lee picking up another pack. <laughs> <laughs> been having fun for the past 10 days, and for those of you just tuning in, this is Jason Latson at Park Casino for the final table of the Norwegian Championship main event. It was a freeze out affair, attracting 904 entries, and now we just see the final eight hang down to a title today. <laughs> Winner will get a photo on the wall of fame that comes out at every Norwegian championship. It's quite the wall with this festival going back more than 20 years. Brody Fagerly has been doing this for a long time. The Norwegian community is absolutely amazing. <coughs> Welcoming me, me in. Welcoming me. Seven hundred. Where is seven hundred? Been oh. absolutely loving commentating whether it's the tournaments or the cash games. Some very big names were oh. here oh. competing in the main event, including 2022 WSOP main event champion Espen Ulin Bjorstad and Norwegian. Chess guru, perhaps the best in the world, and Magnus Carlsen was also in action. Pleasure to see both of them play and having conversations with both of them. Espen I've known for many, many years, but haven't seen him since he won the main event. Meanwhile, I met Magnus for the first time during this event. But back to the action. We have Wally opening wide from the low jack with 5-4 suited. Kai and Mokri calling off his 2.5 million stack for a good portion of it and more of a quarter of a stack with Queen Jack suited and meanwhile we have Ingve Sten with a good squeeze spot but he sees likely that Mokri would have to call I don't think they're putting in a quarter of your stack just to call if just the fold that somebody raises Is good. The two time champion is thinking things over. You can see those two stars on that badge there. One star means you won one event, two means you won two. There's a few players that are just full with stars. there was no ICM to consider, I think Sten would have gotten his 12 big blind stack in by now, but this is really a decision to be made. Oh. Do not blame him at all for folding. He wants those shorter stacks all right. Post -flop poker. to hit the rail, including high and Mokri. Mokri is miles ahead with his queen jack suited. Okay. And if he looks back at this hand later, likely happy that those nines folded, but depends all on this flop. And not the worst flop in the world for Wally. He doesn't directly connect, but flops an open ender. Meanwhile, Mokri is still technically ahead, but you can see the equity percentages are very close. It is a coin flip at this point. Now, see the Wally thinking about what to do. He does check. I am happy to check it back. Nobody should be happy about that ace of diamonds turn. 
Perhaps one of the players will try to Take represent all, this card now. Take them all. So Bali checking again. Does want to see a two or seven on the river if it gets that far. Meanwhile, a four or a five would put him ahead. Okay. Mokri checking it back, not trying to rep that ace. And the three of hearts pair support on the river. We could see Mokri has the best hand, but if Bali tries to bluff off this pot, will Mokri That's call? And he is, oh. he's gonna jam. Mokri has six big blinds behind, has a decision to make with the better hand. Mokri does fall, Wally steals it away. And Kyan Mokri down to just six big blinds in a bit of trouble. And meanwhile, the nine is up by Kyan's head. If he did three bet jam and did get a call, he would have won the hand. Same if he just decided to call. And here is a look at the payouts. Ninth place it was already determined yesterday by Felix Eichram finishing in ninth. has a chip lead, but that doesn't mean he should be playing three high from under the gun. He agrees. Pulled around to Harid from the hijack. It does look like he wants to play uh, as 700. suited. Raised to 700,000. Meanwhile, Kaya Mokri with the jacks. Probably wishes he still had those 700,000 and extra chips. Does three bet it to 1.4 million. This is effectively a jam with 375,000 back. Also, also, this is this is just one guy, though. Can't you? Can't you? Ah, all in. And Harid is all in. A snap call by Mokri. We have our second all-in and call. Will the Jacks hold for Mokri? Will he be up to 4.3 million? He is a two-to-one favorite. This isn't the same as Queens versus Sixes. It is more of a sweat for Kai and Mokri. Yeah. <laughs> Best of luck to both players here. So far, so good for Mokri. Jacks are ahead. <laughs> Oh my, Wait. the Jack of Spades on the turn gives Harid Broadway, but Mokri has some outs for a full house or even four of a kind, but he's packing things up. Unfortunate turn for him. And the three of diamonds on the river, Mokri wishing everybody a good game. Not much he could do there with the Jacks, even if he shoved, I think, a magazine or a Harid call. But 8th place for 10,000 IL, 50 euros for Kayan. And the final 7 now have locked up a cool 13,000 euros in gold, hard cash. We should be interviewing Kayan soon. It will be in Norwegian. By the amazing Svede, who has been at it all week long. And here we go. Den chips det er Kayan som krevde dobling tidlig. Så det ble det exit. Er du fryktelig skuffet nå? Jeg er litt skuffet. Jeg håpte kanskje det skulle spinnes opp, men sånn er det. Det er ikke så mye for gjort. Hvem er det du anser som største favoritten til å ta den titelen akkurat nå? Det er vanskelig å si. De er alle noen vildbasse, men mange har ikke tong. Jeg vet ikke, kanskje Morten Lee? Yngve Stein, hvis han får chips. Du har vist nå i ganske mange turneringer at du er i stand til å manøvrere store felt, komme deg inn på finalebord, til tross for at du har en, hva kan vi si, en litt oversnittet aggressiv tilnærming. Altså, hvordan klarer du å manøvrere et felt så godt, til tross for at du har involvert så mye? Nei, det er jo mye fokus å følge med på litt hva folk gjør og sånn, sikkert. Men det skal jo litt hell til også. Men ja, jeg prøver å finne ut hvor jeg kan hente chips og 
manøvrere meg ut fra det og ta ut fra utgangspunktet i svakhet til folk. Motivasjonen nå for en NM-titel, er den blitt større eller mindre? Jeg har blitt litt større nå faktisk, men vi får prøve igjen neste år. Gratulerer. Takk skal du ha. Still all smiles despite bowing out in eighth. And meanwhile, we have an interesting hand here. It looks like we defended a raise by Harid, who just chipped up to 10 million. But we getting a piece of this board with bottom pair does have the open ender. Meanwhile, Harid has a better open ender. He would need a jack or an ace because the 10 would complete a straight for Lee. Happy to at least see what the river will bring, facing a bet of 550,000 by the chip leader. And an ace on the river. One of the cards Harid need. We see he has the check mark. And Lee checks. I very often expect Harid to check back. It is still a scary board, but he will be tr maybe trying to get some value. He is shuffling his chips. But I'll be slightly surprised if he doesn't check it back despite being ahead. Because if he bets and then he's raising, he's in an awkward spot. But he is looking like he might be trying to get a little bit of extra value. Based on Lee's turn bet <coughs> and checking the river. Bets 1.5 million. Can Lee call with just the four? If he has a read, it would be wrong. Maybe he will call. But there's so many things that he is behind. What would he be putting a read on that would have called that turn bet? Maybe like a 10-3, but is he calling pre-flop with that? Does he need fold? And a read up to 12.9 million. He started as one of the shorter stacks of the day. Now has one of those middling stacks along with Yasin Wali. Both around 42, 43 big blinds. Casper Wirtz kind of in the same neighborhood with 32 big blinds. The short stacks are Ingve Sten and Thor Clevin at the moment, both with 12 big blinds. around to the start of the day, chip leader Yanni Pedersen. He will likely be opening in an ace regardless of the other card from the button. He'd be opening even wider than that. Lee quickly folding his rags. And while Lee, let's see how sticky he is with the 10 deuce that is suited. This is a Doyle Brunson approved hand. I like the call of the suited Brunson. You can see the equities aren't too far apart. But Wally does indeed fold, and Pedersen picking up some free chips there. There's 750,000 in chips put into the pot pre flop before any cards are dealt. And we have one of my favorite dealers, Charlie, in the mix. I got to talk to him a little bit this morning. As you can see, he's one of the fastest shufflers around. Also pitches those cards super quickly. Not on the circuit as often as he used to be, but couldn't miss out on the Norwegian Championship. This event is not only fun for the players, but for those working it as well. And meanwhile, Stan jamming for three and a half million, and Wirtz waking up with a premium hand from the hijack. So we could see our third all-in and call. Ports is in the hijack, does just call. No, he champs it in for 9.7 million. Let's see if anybody else wakes up with something. They're gonna have to wake up with something big. This isn't big enough, but Wally is a bit of a wild card at times, but I don't see him calling off most of his stack with ace nine. He agrees. And Clevin with the short stack, more than happy to see another short stack go out ahead of him. We'll be folding his king nine suited. And it is a coin flip. 
with Sten at risk. Can the two-time Norwegian champion Ingve Sten double up and stay alive, or will he be the second player on the rail early on at the Norwegian Championship main event final table? So far, so good for Sten. Wirtz has both of his cards live along with the back door to the flush draw. Back doors to the wheel as well. Back doors are now closed after the three hearts pairs the board on the turn. Sten sweating now, just six outs. And it's the eight of hearts double pairing the board on the river. One of those pairs is below his fives. That's funny. So Sten doubles through Wirtz up to six point up to 7.8 million, and meanwhile, Casper Wirtz, who doubled up previously with queens versus sixes, is down to 6.2 million. Still 21 big blinds, still a lot of room to make moves. Thank you. And I'm pretty sure Clever, who is the short side, yeah, would like to see that go the other way. No, no, no. At least one yeah. spot. Thank you, too. Meanwhile, Clevin is now down alone as the short stack with 10 big blinds. Everybody else has 21 big blinds or more. We do have a 43 big blind average, so with one hour blind levels, we do have a lot of poker to be played today. more than happy to open up from the hijack with King Wayne. Seems like a lot of players are choosing the 700,000 raise sizing at this fine level. And Clevin with an ace, and now as the short stack, he knows Pedersen can be opening wide with his big stack. This time it's not so wide. Doesn't really have that much fold equity, but he's going to give it a shot, folks. We have an all-in here by Clevin. Let's see if Pedersen snaps it off. Indeed he does. We have our fourth all-in and call. This is absolutely amazing. Just absolute mayhem going on. Clevin is slightly ahead with his ace four. But is in an awkward spot. It is more or less a coin flip. But not anymore after flopping two pair. Pedersen also got a piece with the queen, but he needs another queen to pull ahead. There are some back doors to Broadway for Pedersen as well. But not anymore. Clevin is back down. As his opponent drawing dead after turning the full house in that ace of diamond turns and the inconsequential five of diamonds. Completing the floor on the river, so Clevin now doubles up to 6.3 million, meaning nobody is below 20 big blinds anymore. We've had four all-ins and calls, and three players doubling up. Only Kyan Mokri, unfortunately for him, not able to do the same as the other three players did. He hit the rail in 8th place, as you can see right here, for 10,950 euros. And here's a look at the chip counts of everybody else. Morton Lee in the lead. He was neck and neck with Pedersen to start the day. Now has a slight gap against Pedersen after Pedersen doubled up Clevin on that last hand. See this coming, all this fireworks early on, especially with this blind level rolled back to the beginning. We were more than halfway through this blind level to end yesterday. Regardless how any of these players finish, they should be proud of their performance. There were 904 unique players. It was a pure freeze out. 
open only to Norwegians or those with Norwegian residency, such as Yasin Wali, who is originally from Iraq. It was an 800 euro buying event, and players have already locked up 13,000, with much more to come if they can continue to advance. And Harid may be disappointed nobody else opened up with the Cowboys from the small bind. We know he will be doing something. Is he going to try to disguise it? Doesn't look like a big bet. So not quite a limp, a small raise here with his Cowboys. We see Sven with at least one of those Cowboys. It would be funny if the other one was the King of Diamonds. And oh. likely not considering he opted just to call. Okay. Not the worst flop for Cowboys here for Harid. Very few twos that Sven should be defending with. <laughs> Lars will be betting 600,000, a little less than one third of the pot. Yeah. If this is something like King Five of Hearts, I would expect Sten to stay involved. Assuming it's not that, and he doesn't have another king, maybe an ace king or a king queen would call to see the turn. I would expect Sten to fold. But since we do not know what that other card is, anything can happen. One point six. And is raising it up. Maybe it does indeed have that deuce, or maybe it is a king five suited, or maybe just trying to push Harid off the pot. I don't see that working here, especially with Harid having his opponent covered. He should be not that concerned that his opponent has a deuce, and if he does, it's a bit of a cooler. Here at Wura. Race at Wura. He will be thinking it over. He's trying to get some information from his opponent, but it's then looking straight in the air, not acknowledging Harid, not trying to give off any information about his raise there. It could be a case where Sten will think that Harid doesn't have that many twos. But in this case, it doesn't really matter too much considering he has the Cowboys. Harid jams, Sten quickly fold, so he did not have the two. Nice try there by Sten, but Harid had too strong of a hand to let it go, and is now up to 15 million in chips. Lots of plaques now in front of Lars Harid. Once again, those plaques are 1 million chips each. And now Ingve Sten, two-time Norwegian champion, is down to 17 big blinds after that hand. with the ace jack the chip leader will likely be opening this from any position including under the gun plus one raising it to 700,000 meanwhile Wally waking up also with ace jack let's see what he decides to do he sometimes pauses when he doesn't have hands to think about pre-flop but this one certainly requires a little bit of thought does fold the same hand Meanwhile, Clevin with the sixes. 
Let's see what he decides to do. He did like sixes earlier, but ran into queens. And although he's one of the short sacks, so is Casper Wurtz and Ingve Sten. Does have a lot of hold equity if he puts Lee Light, but he is <coughs> cut off with the button and the blind still to act. Does fold it. And Harid now with the eights. Can set mine off the cool. stack. He is in position, so it's not a pure set mine. Green Bay folds. And Casper will likely quickly fold. Indeed, he does. We're going to go heads up to a flop. <coughs> Are we technically ahead equity wise, but hard to see that equity unless he flops an eight like he just did. And Harid with the full house could get some chips off Lee. Lee does continue quite often, and this is the kind of flop to continue on typically. Two over cards, backdoor diamond flush draw, backdoor straight draws. It's hard to put your opponent on a nine and or pocket eights. Oh. And Harid just going to slow play this wisely to make the call, not putting Lee on too many nines. And may want to continue here the same way, hoping that Lee completes a flush draw. Although for all Harid knows, Lee may have already completed a flush draw. If he had ace-jack of diamonds instead of ace-jack offsuit, he would have. But Lee not slowing down. Harid must be loving this. He is behind the 9-8 and a king-9 and pocket nines, but has to feel he is ahead. After flopping a monstrous full house, it doesn't get much better with pocket eights to see a 9-9-8 flop. Will let Lee do the dirty work, does just call. And a jack of clubs on the river. Let's see if Lee continues firing out. I would expect to see a check by now. Okay. Does indeed check. Now Harid is likely going to try to seek some value. And maybe able to get some now that Lee is connected with the board. He did get value on the flop and turn, but it wasn't because he was the one that let out. Lee bet on both of those streets. Quite a nice pot already for Harid. Who's off to a nice start today. And it looks like about four million there. It's five million, so nearly a pot size bet. I don't see Lee calling here. But maybe he will. He's probably gonna run through what Harid could have had. Would have Harid just flatted with, let's say, a 10 jack? And if so, could have that been of diamonds? He's behind flushes, probably less concerned about those full houses, more concerned about the king and the diamonds. But if he does put him on a jack 10 offsuit kind of hand, we is ahead of that. But would Harid really be betting that? He would probably be checking that back. Let's see what Lee thinks. Are there any bluffs that Harid could have that he would have called a flop, called the turn, and even let it reflop? Not too many that I can think of running through the hands in my head. An ace queen would have likely folded that turn, cool. for example. But Lee thinking otherwise oh, makes the call. He will get the bad news. And Harid up to 23 million after getting nice value off this flop full house. Meanwhile, Mortimer still has plenty of chips, but no longer that chip lead. Lars Harid is now the new chip leader, so we've had two lead chains, changes. Johnny, Johnny Pedersen not too far behind with 21 million. Lars Harid, though, with 23.1 million, as you can see on the graphic on the screen. 26% of the chips in play. Although Morton Lee did lose a big pot just there, he is on 17.7 .7 million in third place with 59 big blinds. It did
did cost him a little bit, but didn't change the fact that he still has a lot of chips. And apparently will also not be slowing him down, oh, opening ace so four suited from under the gun. <coughs> so far, so good for Lee. This isn't the kind of hand he wants to play out of position. Bay folds. I expect Casper to fold as well. He could have shoved there, but it's a little bit too late to doing that. And while Pedersen, who now is Lee covered, defend, no, he will not. And Lee adding 750,000 back to his stack, but will be in the big line this hand. So 600,000 of that going right back to the pop with the ante and the big line. Levin apparently has a spot to be thinking about. We don't see his cards quite yet, but he hasn't snap folded either. This is something we're thinking about, ace eight. It is offsuit, it is early position. I do like the fold. <laughs> Meanwhile, Stead raising off his short stack from the cutoff with queen jack off. Pedersen folds, but Lee, who is actually ahead, will be defending, it seems, with his king seven suited. More than fine defend. Even if he had the short stack, it would be technically fine to defend there. But Stan flopping the goods, flopping the nuts with that straight. A dreamy flop for Stan. There are two hearts, though, so Lee does have a flush draw. So Lee likely not to go anywhere if Sten bets. Firing out for 600,000. Lee will call if not raise because on top of having that flush draw, he op also has the baby end of that open ended straight draw. There could be a spot where he just puts pressure on Sten not knowing how strong Sten Call is. Call. Call. And Lee jams, Sten call. calls. Call we have now. some fireworks. All right, we have no one to call on this final day. This is our fifth all <laughs> in <laughs> a call. <laughs> Three of the players were able to double up when that happened. <laughs> Sven does have a sweat despite popping the nuts with Lee having so many outs. Do not mind this play by Lee at all. Lee is behind, but often he's not this far behind. Often his king is live there too. King has king seven hearts. Eva has queen jack. Lee asking for that heart and showing a lot of heart with that play as well. Ace of spades on the like turn is stay for Sten. Still has to fade nine outs on the river. With Lee's seven not being live for that baby end of the straight. One flop. But any heart is due for Lee to eliminate Sten. But it's not a heart, it's the five of spades that completes the board on the river. Sten okay. doubling up to 10.3 million. Meanwhile, Lee had the chip lead for a bit of time early on today. Is down to 13.3 million after doubling up Sten. Oh, very black, sir. The short stacks yeah. in Thor, Clevin, and Casper Wirtz would have liked to see a heart yeah, as well, so they could have laddered up another spot. 
I've got a little bit of 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 a little Så du där så du på strand. Ligger så. Martin Lee still having fun despite losing half his stack recently. If he doubles up, he's back to the chip lane. Sick, sick. Hon lägger inte för ofta nu med dig. Och meanwhile, it's Boris Marid that has a chip lead. Marid, det var ett strejt med dig. With 23.1 million after winning a big pot after popping a full house with eights against Martin Lee. I thought he was big. Is she left? Patterson opening up the seven hundred thousand on the button more than fine. As we mentioned, he can do this much lighter. Can't quite do it with any two, but you get the idea. And Lee wants to play his ten eight out of position. Let's see if Wally. Will call for another four hundred thousand with his eight six. Is putting on his sunglasses, and when he does that, usually chips go into the pot. It would be a good squeeze spot for him if he had better cards, but he shouldn't be doing that with eight six. If it was like a nine ten suited, he can get away with it. I'm not sure that would be the ideal play. But certainly with 8-6, you don't want to be squeezing. Does just call. Nobody getting any love off this ace-ace do spot, but it does hit Pedersen's range better than anybody else. But Lee can rep that he was also flatting from the small bind with a weak ace. But it checks all the way through. Nothing changes on that five of hearts turn. Pedersen still ahead but likely does not know for sure that he is. Let's see if anybody can steal this away from Pedersen on the turn. It won't be Lee who checked, but let's see what Wally decides to do here. Wally betting 900,000, getting Pedersen to fold and lead as well. Very nice play there by Yasin Wally, up to 13.1 million in chips after stealing that one away. <laughs> Recognizing after a check through on the flop that he could perhaps steal <laughs> it with that low card on the turn. Very good table awareness by Yasin on um, that particular hand. Harid opening up his uh, chip leading stack with King Jack off from under the gun. Probably the, the bottom of his under the gun range, but maybe he'll start opening wider and wider if he's not getting resistance. As he can put pressure on everyone if he so chooses, but has to do it wisely. We saw Morton Lee blow up his stack a little bit. Perhaps he wishes he could take back with that big ball with the ace jack against Ned about 10 minutes ago. Ned has been showing his 7 deuce and Harid picking up some of the chips to extend his chip lead. Currently the only player above 20 million with uh, Yanni Pedersen dipping down below after that hand before has 19.6 million but not too far off the chip lead with uh, Lars Harid having 23.9 million. Yes. 
still yeah some mix. around to Wally on the button. This would be a wide button open if he did it. Does fold. May see a walk here. Let's see what Thor decides to do. Love the name Thor. I always think of a true Viking when I hear the name Thor. <laughs> But no Viking move here with the A4 off, and Harid gets a walk with the King Jack, which he just opened up the previous hand from under the gun, and is up to 24 million in chips. His stack keeps growing and growing. After winning that hand with the eight, swapping a full house on a 998 board, importantly betting the flop and turn before checking the river with his ace jack, got a jack on the river, Decided there was some value facing a bet on a very wet board at that point with also three diamonds out there, a king out there, and paid off Harid with nearly a pot size bet. Mer än 14 stack eller något sånt. Han ska bli 20. Folds all the way around to Clevin on the button. I would almost like to see a jam and not just a standard opening, even though it's a bit of a wide jam. Even though he is in position, it's not a hand that you often know where you stand post flop and can be easily pushed off. And it's hard to bet a lot of flops even when you're ahead. Obviously, if a six comes, it makes things easier. Well, six but Thor oh. has a different plan in mind with the min raise. And this should work anyway, with nobody showing up with hands from the blinds. So it didn't need to shove a min raise, should get the job done. Ingve <laughs> might be sticky come with this 10 5 off. Does eventually fold, perhaps trying to get Clevin a little bit nervous there. And Clevin up to 6.3 million after taking down the blinds and ante. double this not too long ago playing on a stack of 12.6 million happy to open up to 700,000 from the low jack with queen jack suited this isn't the seven deuce game so I think we will see a quick fold indeed we do Clevin folding his baby suited connectors a refolding as well I don't believe this will be a hand that Sten will play from the small blind Let's see how wide Casper Wirtz defends. Not this wide, and Lee chipping up to 13.3 million. Dark. Meanwhile, Casper Wirtz is down to 16 big blinds as the short stack. Nobody in dire jeopardy at this point in time. 16 big blinds is still plenty at a final table, especially with one hour blind levels. 
although he would like to double up for a second time after losing some of his chips afterwards. Doesn't need to do so in a hurry either. And Clevin with 21 big blinds. Likely will open his ace jack from the hijack. Unlike the hand with the sixes from the button, I would prefer just to see a raise. And I do like min raising myself, so appreciate Clevin quite a lot for sticking to the min raise. Then thinking about what to do with his weaker ace. Even though he is in the button, I think it would be a bit speculative to call here. So it's going to likely either be a three bet or a fold, with the fold being the safest play. But meanwhile, Casper Wirtz waking up with the queens. He doubled up with once with queens against sixes. And I believe that was against Clevin as well. And here we go again. He's all in for 4.8 million. Let's see if Clevin will call. <laughs> I did like the open. The only hand that he's seen Casper Wirtz show down with was those queens. Otherwise, Casper has not been playing hands. Actually, he did show down with something else after that that wasn't as strong. So maybe that's going through Clevin's mind. <coughs> it would be for most of his stack. He would still have 1.5 million remaining, but that would only be five big blinds if he called and doubled up Wirtz for a second time. Four nine, okay actually for 4.9 million, not 4.8, as we just heard the dealer say. Doesn't make a big difference in the decision-making factor, but Clevin making the good pull, that ah, works jamming right. up to 6 million in chips. And if we believe that jam was for 4.9 million, it's actually 6.1 million in chips, the, the 100,000 difference, which was the starting stack of 100,000 at this stage of the game, doesn't really matter with the 300,000 big line, it's only one third of a blind. Whether it's six million or six one, it still puts him at twenty big lines. And meanwhile, that puts Thor Clevin as the shortest stack, but still with nineteen bigs. I absolutely love these final table dynamics. The deep stack play. Very often when I'm either commentating or reporting or playing at final table, stacks are super shallow. We will likely see shallow stacks at some point, but it's possible that we won't depending on the cards and how players choose to play them. I've seen deep final tables go by fast, and I've seen shallow final tables take longer than I thought. But I hope this goes for a while, being that this is the last day. It is a bit emotional for me as well. Words opening the button for 700,000 and Pedersen, who began the day with the chip lead, still in second place despite losing some of his chips, is dominating that jack 10 with a suited ace jack. Will be three betting. Yeah. Do you like this from the small blind? I mean, if Wirtz had something like Queens, I maybe would put Pedersen in a tough spot. He would be kind of priced in more or less with his ace jack, unlike Clevin, who would have been calling off most of his stack. But I think in this case, we will not be seeing a jam. I thought we'd be seeing a full, but Casper Wirtz has something else in mind. Or maybe he doesn't. be thinking of calling and playing a position, but then it could be trouble if it's a jack high flop. Unless of course it's a jack 10 flop. But he doesn't know what Peterson, what Pedersen is doing this with. 
trying to rebet before. So Casper does make a <coughs> decision, lays down his hand. And Pedersen is up to 20.3 million. Meanwhile, Casper Wirtz is down to 18 big blinds. Blinds have now gone up 200,000, 400,000. So instead of what I just said, Casper Wirtz actually has 13 big blinds and Thor Clevin 14 big blinds. Those are the two players in most Jeopardy. I'm not sure if they feel like they have shove or fold stacks quite yet. Very often I do at this juncture. I don't like raise folding off those stacks. So I either do that or tighten my range even more. But meanwhile, Harid raising to two and a half big blinds from early position with the queen jack. So far, so good. And even if Wally decides to just call, Harid is miles ahead. It is a defendable hand by Wally, even from an early position open if he chooses to do so especially with his stack depth of more than 30 big blinds. Does indeed defend. So 2.6 million already in the pot. And a decent flop for both players. Both players getting draws. It isn't the best of best flops. But Wally with the flush draw, Habib with the open-ended straight draw, you can see the equities are nearly a coin flip at this point. But Habib is technically ahead with his queen jack to queen five. And will be betting his draw after Wally checks. Don't expect Wally to be going anywhere after defending. With that ace out there, it's not strong enough to really be check raising. Because if you're then raised back, you may have to fold. <laughs> so in my mind's eye, the optimal play is just to call here. Definitely shouldn't be folding. And I'm sure some of you out there would like to see a check raise, but I do like the call. And oh my, the five of hearts on the turn pushes Wally ahead. He has really little way of knowing that, but his flush draw is still alive. I expect after Wally did call Harid's bet that this very often goes check check. There's very little point for Wally to bet here. Because he could be far behind and does come up with the same conclusion to check. Now will Harid put pressure on Wally? It wouldn't work unless it's big. Or will he check it back? With a chip leading stack, it could go either way. I would be checking this back myself most of the time. <coughs> but do not blame Harid if he wants to put pressure on Wally. And bets about half the pot for 2.2 million. We could see Wally's ahead. He may not realize he's ahead because Harid would be doing this with any ace, with, with some tens even. And as we can see with the open ended straight draw, he's doing it as well. jamming here putting the pressure on the chip leader yeah. 
This is one of the reasons I would have liked to see Hurry just check it back. It was so good, Honda. Not blame him at all for putting pressure. And Yasin Wali showing that he's here to play up to 17.2 million in chips, putting him near the chip lead. And meanwhile, Yanni Pedersen, who began the day with the chip lead, is back in the chip lead, out by it with a shorter stack than he began the day with. He does have 20.3 million. Boris Harid with 19.9 million, so they're very close. And meanwhile, Yasin Wali chips up to 17.2 million. Morton Lee, who had the chip lead at one point down to 12.5 million. Ingve Sten at 9.5 million. Dwar Kleven at 5.7 million. And Casper Wirtz at 5.3 million with 13 big lines. <laughs> Stand opening to eight hundred fifty thousand with this King Jack from early position. Pedersen calling from the cutoff with his chip leading stack with the sevens. Lee deciding to play his 9-8 in position with just a call. Wally who just chipped up with that nice move. Bolt and don't expect Clevin to be defending 9-3. Off a short stack you can't be defending but 9-3 offsuit is not one of those hands especially going four way. You might say the more chips that are in, the more you're priced in, but not with 9-3. It would be actually better to defend heads up than four way in my opinion, but either way, this should be going into the muck. And Thor does come with that same conclusion and we will be going three way to the flop with nearly 3.6 million already in the pot. And Lee, who called from the button, flopping two pair here. Pedersen can't be too comfortable with his sevens and Sten is not gonna try to rep that ace. So if Lee bets it here, which he should, it's still a very draw heavy board with the two diamonds out there. That eight nine that did help Lee also could provide some players straight draws. He also wants to try to get values from, let's say if Sten was checking an ace queen, ace jack, ace king type of hand. Even ace 10 can open there. Sten shouldn't be opening ace nines or ace eights. Maybe if they're suited, he would. So this should likely get through, unless Sten is going to try to rep that he has an ace, but I don't think he will, not in a three-way pot. Does fold, and there's no reason for Pedersen to stick around. Does fold as well, and Morton Lee getting some chips back up to 15.2 million, perhaps that's the momentum hand he needs. have going on at Poker NO right now is amazing. You can actually play back all the hand histories in text form. It's also a bit visual as well. They were doing that yesterday and I was able to follow some of the action from the side tables. So 
so if you missed some of the coverage, you can go back and check out the hands by looking at the live updates there. And Morris Harid, that's all it took for him to get back in the chip lead with 20 million. So we had yet another lead change. Du har ju mest av dig. Aldrig. Och det tar ju på den halva måten då. Nej, så det tar du med ti steg. All good. Ja, det tar slut. So we began the day with Pedersen in the chip lead. Lee quickly took that over. Pedersen grabbed it back by default. Harid took it and then Pedersen grabbed it back. And now Harid back in the chip lead. And Lee opening up the hijack with queen six suited. Opting what to do with this queen nine does fold it. Prøv lykke han. Jeg kan ikke ta sine med de plekser i stemmer. Du skrev ikke navnet dine på deg, så... Ja, det er sånn at jeg glemte å riste det. Det er sånn at jeg glemte å riste det. Det er sånn at jeg glemte å riste det. Det er sånn at jeg glemte å riste det. Harid with the flush drawer, Morden Lee with top pair. We could see some action here, Harid checking. Is Lee gonna try to get some value from his top pair? We could see that he is just drawing to a pair of runners though. And like a hand previously where Harid popped the full house, he's gonna play this one smooth. See, Maskong is about that, okay. Calls it. And now Lee could be in a bit of trouble here. A very unfortunate turn. It looks like a fortunate one for him. <coughs> Groups of trips. It will only be a fortunate turn depending on the river. And we trying to get value, hmm? but no value oh. to be had with her reading. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I thought it was his turn, so it's m it's on me. But yeah, checked. Sure. So Harid, valid gear on a block. Sort of after Lee's bet, but more than happy to call for another million. Is he going to raise it here? If he puts me on a queen, he might decide to raise. The impression is that he's very upset. The previous time these two faced off, Harid was in position. This time he's out of position. So let's see how he approaches it here. And he indeed does check raise at the 3.6 million. Lee is not only behind the flush, which we see Harid has, but there are better queens that Harid can have. And Lee does indeed make the call. So we already have nearly 11 million in the pot with one card to come. And it's a king of diamonds completing the border on the river. This could spell trouble for Morton Lee. It's going to be yeah, very yeah, difficult yeah. for him Ikke to get away from river, this. Da. Det er aldri huset. Jeg hadde det fra før av, kanskje. Ja. Harid checks Ush. and Lee checks it back. So Lee staying alive. Ah, it's not a bit mad at us. Harid did that because he's afraid of some queen kings. Oh, do you find me quarter five mil? Now with twenty five point nine million and we down to twenty six big lines. So we could do another. Despite flopping trips, the despite turning trips. I got it. I got it. Ah, yeah. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Vamos, lista. Ja, det er ikke mange som spiller poker, da. There's a bit of a gap now between Lars Reed and Yanni Pedersen. Still a few short stacks in play. suited. And works defending with the ace 10 off his short stack. Don't get mind to see a shove there, but I understand the ICM implications. Harid should be opening up buttons wide. Both players checking a drive two three seven flop that does favor a big blinds range words is ahead I don't believe this is for value oh yeah he is just trying to take down the pot here will be relieved I think if her read folds oh but it's a good for the hard time at all and Harid does fold, so Wirtz gaining some breathing room up to 6.5 million if Harid did raise, Wirtz would have likely had to have folded and been left with an even shorter stack. and a mystery card Ch has chipped up nicely today Deciding what to do with this 10 9 off from the button. We do not know what Wally has, but we know he did raise from early position to 900,000 with at least that ace of hearts. Looks like that will get the job done. We don't need to know the other card. Oh, we got Juliana dealing now. Another one of my dealer friends. A very good dealer. I see her quite often in places like Estonia. She's always asking about my dog, who's made a trip to Estonia once when she was a little puppy. Became friends with Pepe. Looking forward to seeing Pepe, although I wish that we had more Norwegian, more Norwegian championship action coming. It's kind of sad that today is the final day. And 
Wally with the sixes from under the gun. Please. Playing off a big stack. We'll be raising it. Land here. And Clevin, this is like effectively a three bet jam with just one big blind behind, raising it up to 4.2 million with the King 10. Wally is a bit of a wild card. Typically, you would see players maybe folding their sixes here, but Wally may decide to call, and he wouldn't be in the worst of shape if he did. I do like that Wally is not making quick decisions, but does make the call. Basically, players are all in at this point, and with Clevin at risk, it is a coin flip situation. There is still 500,000 <laughs> chips left in Clevin's stack. You can see those two blue chips, so the chip counts are fully accurate. Those are 250k chips each. And oh my, Wally flopping that full house a dream situation. We'll be putting his opponent all in. Rather unfortunate spot here for Clevin. It is possible he gets running tens or running kings. But it only has a 1 in 50 chance for that to happen. It's looking pretty much like it will be showers for Thor Clevin. Or two sevens. And it's good game for Clevin. You can see he's giving everybody fist pumps. He has gone out in seventh place for 13,000 euros. The final six players have locked up now 15,500 euros. Here comes his exit interview. It's not so easy to get full hus on the floppen to cast it. No, it goes badly. It was just meant to be an all-in, but it's pre. How did you sum up this tournament as a whole? It was very good. It's been a long day with poker, so it's nice to play the final board. Do you have a pleasure with you just now? No, not just now, but it's probably time for a time or two, so I'm glad. Congratulations for a fantastic job. Thank you. And back to the action with six players left. The action is back up to 38 big blind average. Yasin Wali is not in the chip lead, but very close now with 23.7 million in chips. Mara Sarid still in the lead with 24.9 million. And now Sten with 19 big blinds. Casper Wirtz, the only player shorter with 16 big blinds, opening up his sevens from the hijack. Wirtz wouldn't mind seeing some more fireworks and laddering up again. 
but nobody really with anything to play back with. Maybe Wally will defend. It's okay to defend, actually, but would be far behind. Does give it up, so Sten getting a little bit of breathing room up to 22 big blinds. Not the worst scenario for the two-time Norwegian champion, as you can see from that patch on his hoodie. absolutely loving this early mayhem. I was expecting the action to be a little bit slower to start off, but we've seen now six all-ins and calls, four players doubling up, and now we have Sten with a premium hand with big slicks, and we could see more mayhem here if Wirtz does do something with his ace-10. is taking his time, which I like quite a lot. Does indeed fold. He would have been far behind if he shoved. Sten would have been calling, most likely anyway. But there is a 3,000 euro pay jump between sixth and fifth. Sixth place finisher will get 15,500 with fifth going home with 18,500. The bigger jumps are after that though. After that, all the jumps are going to be at least five figures. Harid will likely at least defend, if not more, though, from the big blind, playing off the big stack at the moment. Does indeed call. There could be more chips going in the pot, especially if there's an ace on this flop. But meanwhile, Sten improving to top pair. Far ahead in this hand, but I don't think we'll see any more chips been going in from her read stack despite having the back door flush draw it's not really enough from an under the gun opening range no point in blowing up your stack there are times to put pressure and times not to let's see how her read approaches it will reverse float to see a turn Reevaluate his situation, especially if a club comes or an ace. An ace would be disastrous for him. But meanwhile, it's a three of spades pairing the board on the turn. Harid does have some threes he would be depending with, but instead shouldn't be that concerned about that. Or especially after Harid checks again. Although Harid has shown that when he has strong hands, he is check calling. Last time he checked, raised a turn when he had that flush. options with the top pair. It is pretty. It is a dry board. Oh, day. And it is a bet for 1.8 million. I think this should get Harid out of the way. He should know now how far behind it he is. He may try to turn his hand into a bluff. He may think he has showdown value, so he may be thinking about this differently than we are. All in. Oh my god! Jamming it in! He indeed is turning his hand into a bluff, putting the I pressure on Sten. Sten making the I snap call. The An amazing shape. Harid just blowing up his stack here. And Sten loving every moment of this. Oh. Oh. 
Are we drawing dead? It does not matter what this river card is. And the two of clubs completing the board on the river. And Harid doubling up Sten. Sten, who had one of the short stacks to start the day, has now doubled up three times and is up to nearly 18 million. And by default, we have Yasi Wali in the chip lead with 22.9 million in chips. I moved over. Wow. No, no. Uh, what? 200 more. Uh, oh, yeah, he, he is all in. I shoved. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, sorry. I did not see that coming. As we mentioned earlier, there's times to put pressure and times not. It's easier for us to say when we can see the cards, of course. But Morton Lee blowing up his stack. Now we see the same by Harid here. It doesn't seem like the chip leaders do hold on to their chips. We've had many lead changes so far. It started off today with Patterson in the lead. Lead won a couple of small pots to take the lead before Patterson took it back by default. Harid had the lead before Patterson grabbed it back. Harid had it back again. again. And for the first time we see Yasin Bali with the chip lead. Not because he won a hand recently, although he did win a big pot after eliminating Thor Clevin. But that was about 10 minutes ago. It was because Harid just blew his uh, stack up and doubled up Sten. Amazing action. Early on, we've had seven respect wins and calls. Mm -hmm. Two players eliminating, five players doubling up, and including Sten during three separate times. And meanwhile, Sten with Ace King once again, but gets a walk. He would have been putting pressure back at opponents if they did raise. And the lovely Juliana shuffling up the deck. And in the background, you can see Frode Fagerle talking to one of the members of the floor here at the Norwegian Championship. An amazing job by Frode for putting all of this together. Brand new location, so a lot to be done after being in Dublin for more than 10 years. This is the first time that the tour has visited Radoslava at Card Casino. And it's Harid's turn for Race. Big Slick. Raising it up to one million from the button. And Wirtz defending with the jack six off. As we mentioned, the short stacks can defend, but this is a two and a half big blind raise and just jack six. Not the flop that Wirtz wanted to see with his jack six, but her read. Also not getting a flop that connected with his ace king is miles ahead at the moment. This continuation bet should work. Unless Wirtz wants to bluff here. And a bluff could work if he knew what Harid had, but not against his range. And not worth taking the risk, despite being the shortest stack at the table at the moment. Loving the mayhem. We're a little more halfway through the second blind level of the day. We've seen two players already hit the rail. Five double ups, including Sten, three separate times to get into the middle of the pack yeah, with 17.9 million after starting the day with a short stack. Uh, yeah, yeah.
jotting down all the all ends and calls so that we can review them if we need to later because as the day goes on it might be difficult to remember with so many happening I can't remember such mayhem in a deep stack final table as what we've seen so far today so I hope you're as entertained as I am for those of you just tuning in this is Jason Glatzer commentating the final table of the Norwegian Championship main event. Currently the final six have locked up 15,500 with Push much to come with tonight's winner going home with 110,768 euros. But back to the action we have Harid racing with the A7. Pedersen who began the day with the chip lead defending with the Ducks currently ahead but no way of knowing that with three overcards to his deuces. Harid though checking I'm back, sorry. not trying to rep that queen. Although we did have that queen, we've seen Harid try to set some traps as well. Perhaps after it checks twice, Harid will bet and be able to take this one away despite being far behind with his a7 at the moment. Let's see how sticky as Pedersen is with his ducks. It's hard to call here. Because even if you think you're ahead, you're going to maybe have a bigger decision to make on the river. So, well played there by Harid. Did have what I believe to be a mistake with that turn jam before. But other than that, has played very good poker. And some might debate that they did like that jam, and I'm being results oriented that his opponent, Sten, couldn't be calling unless he had something super strong, which is true, but would he be preventing the flop and the turn? That is up for debate. But despite that, Lars Harid is in second place at the moment with 18.8 .8 million, is in good shape with 47 big blinds. Hasn't seemed to let that hand get to him, which is important. What happened in the past happened in the past. You always have to look at your current situation. And Harid with the Queens now. We'll be opening that, it looks like, to 900,000. And Lee may opt to defend off his 21 big blind stack. Really 22 with the blind in the middle already. is a nice hand to defend with. In this case, he's utterly dominated. If that case queen comes out, that could spell trouble for Morton Lee. But instead, Lee connecting with his nine on the jack deuce nine flop does check it. Harid's queens are very good at this point. They were good pre-flop too, but should be happy to see three cards under a queen on that flop. We'll try to go for some value here with a bet of 600,000. So one quarter of the pot, perhaps stringing Lee along with this nine. Lee does make the call, hoping for a queen or a nine. We know the queen would be disastrous, but Lee does not know that. And the board got a bit more dangerous. The 810 would have got in there. That's something Lee could have defended with. We see that he didn't. But more importantly, there are two flush draws going into the river. So I expect Harid to protect his hand with a larger size bet. And indeed he will. It looks like a bet of 2 million. Can Lee get away from this? is in a tough spot and I hope that my friend does not blow up his stack but he does call he only has two outs to get ahead of those queens does not know what his opponent has and how far behind he really is but it's a ton of spades completing the board on the river and Lee checks Harid may check it back now. The board got scared with flushes completing. Queen King getting there, and he ate. But Harid 
back up to 23 million, back in the chip lead after taking that nice pot off Morton Lee. And Morton Lee, who had the chip lead not so long ago, is down to just 5.2 million. He is slightly ahead of Casper oh, yeah. Wirtz with 4.7 million, but neither player in excellent shape at this stage of the tournament. You must to call me free flop. Uh. Entertaining couple of hours of poker thus far, and I'm sure we're in for many more big hands. Casper Wirtz making a move with his queen ten. Does want to see this just get through? While we would maybe defend to a min raise with his jack game, but this is a three x. Does look quite strong. We see Wirtz isn't that strong. We see the Jack-8 are both live. Wirtz would still be ahead of a Jack-8 though. Does fold and Wirtz picks up a million chips and gets a little bit of breathing room up to 5.7 million. minutes left to play in this blind level before players will go on a short break. As of now there is no dinner break scheduled for today but it depends on the length of the event. There could be one added at some point but the way things have been going right now I do not expect to see a dinner break so all the breaks shall be short. But folds around to Wally with the ace jack. Yeah, you have it. You have it. Yeah, I'm not on this, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not on this. 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 I'm not While he checks, let's see if Harid tries to add some chips now or later. It looks like he will be going for some value right here, right now. Is Wally going to call with his two overcards? Doesn't waste too much time in doing so. Doesn't know how far behind he is, but now a queen would help him to get to Broadway if he can see a river card. It's not really enough if he knew he was up against the set, but he has no way of knowing that. But the king also is a scare card to his jack that may be able to get Wally to fold, especially if the bet sizing is big here by Harid. He may feel like Harid is making a move with a bet. We've seen him slow play some monster hands before, but not this time. Betting two million. Wally's read on the situation. Does lay it down. 
and although Harid wasn't able to get value on the turn, he got a little bit on the flop and extends his chip lead back up to 24 million. He did blow up his stack before, but now has recovered. Here is a look at the chip count, so we can see Wirtz and Lee both below 15 big blinds. Everybody else around the same, give or take. Once you have more than 40 big blinds, whether it's 40 or 60, you have a deep stack. have a short stack to start the day, but has doubled up three times already early on at the final table. And it wasn't necessarily spots where he got lucky. He was miles ahead, even had an opponent drawing dead on that last double. Raise 1.2 million. And Wirtz again with the big betting size off the short stack, oh. this time to 1.2 million with Ace Jack from under the gun. Oh. And Wally waking up with the big slick. This could spell trouble for Casper Wirtz. Wally is not going anywhere, likely to three bet his ace king from the button. Wirtz just min raised or something Raise. resembling a min raise, it would be Raise. easier for him to get mm -hmm. off the hand. But now it's a three oh. bet to three million by Wally. Will Wirtz be able to sniff this out? Oh. Players in the blinds do fold. He will be looking back at his ace jack and making a decision. This does look strong, but Wally is capable of making moves as well. calling off most of his stack here, or at least more than half. Very interesting here. And perhaps Wirtz can save his chips, being that there is a king on the flop. Wirtz can get a queen for Broadway. Wally not only with top pair, oh. but has that ace of hearts for the back door. Wally jamming. Let's see if Wirtz can get out of the way. He's in a rough spot after putting in more than half of his stack free flop, calling that three bet by Wally. Kind of put himself in this position. the dealer Dave Trick oh, patiently oh, waiting for oh, a while for Wirtz and Wirtz calling it off oh no oh no and Wirtz needs a miracle drawing to just four outs to that queen or queen. running jacks would also get him there but technically that's possible but not likely a queen is more likely, but it does need a miracle either way. Casper Wirtz is in dire jeopardy of hitting the rail. Some drama, some suspense. Waiting for that turn. Both players standing up. Right now we have Casper who moves all in. And he's been called by Yasin Namad. Casper is at risk to go out. He is shown as an ace of clubs, jack of hearts. Yasin has ace king with a king on the flop. Right now, Casper is going to need a queen in order to catch up and make a straight. Let's see a turn card. A queen.
Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's on the turn. That's almost a needle there for Wurtz because he did hit his top there, perhaps thinking that maybe his ace was five when he made that call. Oh, no. But Wally now with top two, which is one more card to come. A queen is still alive for Wurtz, though. But it's the two of clubs on the river. Wally taking the chip lead by eliminating Casper okay. Wurtz. He's eliminated the last two players. Good game. Champ for Huxley. Moments ago. And Casper Wirtz out in sixth place for 15,500 euros. The top five now have locked up 18,500. And Svetty will likely be interviewing Casper Wirtz as he will be with every player that hits the rail today at the TV table, at the final table. A well played tournament by Casper Wirtz. Nothing to be ashamed of despite that last hand. We'll take down. We'll take home 15,500 euro. And Yasin Wally up to 27.6 million. That's the biggest stack we have seen in this tournament. Kasper, I gratulerer og kondolerer med en fantastisk innsats. Jo, tusen takk skal du ha. Det, ja, den holdt ikke helt hjem i år heller. Er du fornøyd med spillet du har levert så langt i dette nøysmesterskapet? Jeg lavet to feil, store feil i går, det gjorde at jeg var lovstekt i dag. Den hånd her, jeg visste han havde Eskong efter flop. Og så var det, jeg har to millioner tips tilbage. Jeg skal i blindsene, jeg er færdig alligevel. Og så krydser jeg fingre for en heldig dame. Men jeg er veldig fornøyd. Gratulerer med en fantastisk innsats. Selv takk. Nice to see the friendly Casper Wirtz smiling during his exit interview. He should be happy he laddered up a few spots. That's maybe what they talked about. But we now have a 45 big blind average after three players hitting the rail. That will change pretty soon though because we're not too far away from the first break when blinds will go up to 250,000, 500,000. But meanwhile, Pedersen, who defended with the 10-3, Flops that open ender. It wasn't really a defend. We missed the beginning of the hand. It did go check check. Pedersen pulls ahead with that bottom pair on that three turn. Does check it back. And let's see if Sten tries to steal this away. Does not. Pedersen likely to check it back. There's no reason for him to believe that he can get any value from this hand, but as I say that, he bets. And Sten has just pinged high on a fairly scary board. So unless he's raising, he should be folding. A raise would have actually worked there. That's why I do not like that play. Even though he would be getting some eights to fold, maybe some nines. But did have his opponent play that hand if he had an 8 or a 9, but if he tried to get some value at some point during that hand. These are the things I think about when I'm playing. Perhaps all the players are thinking about something different. Obviously, they're at the final table. I'm in the commentating booth. So they likely know more than me, but I do play, play quite a lot of online poker and there you can play I mean I know players playing 30 tables at once I'm usually playing anywhere between four and seven tables at a time at least to start off the day so very often I see myself in final tables and this is what I'm thinking about by the time the final tables come around I have maybe just that table open maybe two tables maybe three so I'm able to put a lot of thought into my decisions despite that time clock ticking away. I have to think fast. In live poker, players can take their time. I do play a lot of live poker as well at the local, and those tournaments typically get between 40 and 100 players, so also get to be in a lot of final tables there as well, but not in a big spot such as this, where I'm playing for more than 100,000 euros. And Lee flopping that flush draw after defending Sten's button open, will Sten continue? As I mentioned, you can 
defend off a short stack. That's 500,000. And we jamming it in in an amazing spot just because Stan Wilfold, he did have some fold equity left in his hand. I love this play. Had an overcard, had that flush draw. Well played by Morton Lee, up to 6.5 million. So even though Morton did blow up his big stack, he is playing his short stack very well, keeping himself alive. Could have easily gone on tilt and hit the rail but has remained composed. And it's no secret that I am rooting for Morton Lee just because he is my closest friend at the final table. I've known Morton probably for about eight years now. Some of these and players I've been this now? week, Casper Wirtz I've known for maybe a couple years yeah, as well, minutes. maybe longer. Yeah. As a reporter, I'm not usually showing favoritism in my reports, but it's harder to do when you're commentating. It doesn't mean I won't necessarily mention when I think a hand is not played optimally, but just because I don't think it's played optimally doesn't mean it's not optimal. I'm not studying GTO. I don't think a lot of these players at the final table though are also studying GTO. Maybe Ingbe Sten <coughs> is, maybe Lars Harid, and maybe Yanni Pedersen. Morten Lee is a good player, but a recreational player. And Yasin Wali, who has a chip lead and seems to know what he's doing, doesn't seem to be following GTO either. But you don't need to necessarily follow GTO, it's just good to understand it, oh. but GTO It's very flexible because it's hard to put in your exact opponent's right. ranges, especially in a recreational event that it also attracts oh. top level professionals like 2022 WSOP main event champion Espen Jorstad, who did oh. make the money but was unable oh no. to make it all the way to the final table. At least in this event, I know he would have loved to have added lit. a Norwegian <laughs> Championship main event title. Yeah, to his lit, WSOP main pause, event yeah. title. Yeah. But just because oh. you want something doesn't mean it'll happen. But it looks like now players will be going on their first break, so we will be right back in about 15 to 20 minutes. Stay tuned. Thank you very much. This is Jason Glatzer bringing to you live the final table of the Norwegian Championship main event. Yeah, for the freestyle. Yeah.